following message is a presentation of Valley Metro Church, a community of believers dedicated to knowing God and making Him known. We are uh, we're jumping back into the book of Romans, and it is the book that changed the world, literally. The book of Romans changed the world. Chuck Swindoll says about Romans, he says it's the most important book in the Bible. Another commentator said, every great revival in history can be traced back to this book of Romans. And I would say, whoa, if you understand the book of Romans, you'll understand the rest of the Bible. Because the book of Romans is like the pulse, it's like the heartbeat of what God's doing. There's so much disclosure, insight, understanding uh, to the kingdom, it is absolutely amazing. So we took a little break for, for Christmas and New Year and we're jumping back in with a passion. And today, this section that we're dealing with, the last chapter, this chapter, and the next chapter, are dealing with probably the oldest question that humanity has ever had. If you look back at all civilizations, deep in the soul of human beings throughout time, throughout history, has been this deep longing of understanding, who am I? I mean, really, who am I? And people across the world, in every civilization, have long sought to understand, I mean, who am I really? Who am I supposed to be? And ever since the beginning of time, people have been going on a quest, a lifelong journey of trying to discover who am I really? Who am I supposed to be? Why am I here? What's going on? Trying to understand meaning. Some people climb Mount Everest to try to discover the answer. Other people go off in solitude to try to find the answer. But the fact is, it's a noble quest. We all ought to know, who am I really? Well, the book of Romans is answering it right now, and it's pretty profound. And my prayer today is that you get revelation and discovery in your own life on who you are really. I'm gonna to speak to you today about your identity, and you might be thinking, well, Pastor, you don't really know me well enough to speak to me about my identity. I may not know you well enough, but the living God knows our identity really, really well. He knows our natures, he knows his plan, and, it, and this passage is gonna to start to disclose and bring to light realities about our nature, our old nature, our new nature, some radical dimensions, and I think a lot of folks miss out on this, and they miss out on an enormous part of the kingdom of God. There was that song earlier, this is my story, this is my song. Everyone in the room has a story that's being written right now. Everyone in the room has a song, whether you've sung it out loud yet or not. God's given you a story, he's given you a song. That story can be one of, I went through life, I struggled, I tried, I tried hanging on as hard as I could till the end, or it can be a story of God's glory. Let me tell you what the living God did through me. It wasn't me, it was him, but let me tell you what he did when I got out of the way. When I discovered who I am, who I'm supposed to be, who he is, things started to change. You can have a completely different story and song if you understand this aspect of identity that Paul's talking about here. Who am I? Who am I supposed to be? Well, just to start off, I wanna just touch on what we covered last time we got together. We were in Romans 5. And Paul talked about Adam. And he said Adam was the, the first Adam, of course, and then Jesus was the second Adam. He had some pretty cool conclusions. He said the first Adam his life had like this overflow effect into your life and in mine. That the DNA of Adam ended up coming into our lives. His sin, his fall, his nature, everything. It had an overflow effect. That's the first Adam. And we, like it says in uh, Chronicles of Narnia, we are sons of Adam and daughters of Eve. That's a fact of life on planet Earth for every human being to understand that. There's many who don't understand they were born a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve, so to speak. And since they don't understand that, they wonder why they're doing half the things they're doing. They're trying to fix their life, repair their life, self-help. They're trying all sorts of things on this journey, this quest to know who am I. They forgot the first point that Paul covers. We're sons of Adam. We're daughters of Eve. That's how we were born. That's why we do the things that we do. 
That's why we act the way we act. We were born into that spiritual DNA. The good news is that there was a second Adam. The second Adam was Jesus. And he undid, undid all the mess of the first Adam. That is really cool. The second Adam gave us a new nature. The first Adam was a, a life taker, and the second Adam was a life giver. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So there's this cool thing about a new nature that you and I have that we're gonna talk about. It has a lot to do with your identity, but many are confused because they are still stuck in the old identity, and many have not identified any of these realities. And as a result, wandering through life, trying to figure it out, trying to crack the code, and not getting in on the understanding of really your God-given position. If you're a believer this morning, you have a God-given position. You can't earn it, you can't buy it. It was freely given to you. And many even believers don't understand what that God-given position is. And as a result, wander and meander, trying to figure out why am I doing the stuff I do and I don't understand who I am. Paul wants to bust that wide open today. The last time to set this up as well, it left us with a verse in Romans chapter 5, verse 20. It left us with this verse where sin increased in the world, grace increased even more. So that even though Adam and people messed up all along, what Jesus did increased even more. So in other words, he undid everything. And what he was realizing is that some people, believers, were saying, all right, so if the sin increases and the grace increases more, technically, I can get away with more stuff. That's what people were thinking. I mean, Jesus' grace surpasses anything I could really do, technically, so why can't I just get away with more stuff? People were starting to think that way. Maybe you know some folks that think that way. I know uh, years ago, I, was, uh, I moved to LA for music to pursue a music career. I came up here and we had a, a band with Beverly Hills lawyers representing us and you know, shopping us to the labels, doing showcases. And, Along this journey of playing these clubs and doing this stuff, trying to get a record deal, I got the best deal out of all. I had an encounter with the real Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, who changed my life. He totally changed my life. He totally changed what I was aiming at, my motive, who I was, where I was going, why I was doing what I was doing. So I, I kind of walked away from pursuing the record deal as the holy grail of my life, if you will, as an idol, and I started to use music for the glory of God. I started writing songs with this bass player. He was a believer. And after a while, this guy said, you know what? I think I'm just gonna go back out there and party it up. I'm really, I'm really having a hard time trying, trying so hard to live right with God. I'm going back out there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This guy was married with kids. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, that's it. I'm moving back to Hollywood. I'm gonna start partying, doing what I wanna do. I go, are you out of your mind? You know what he said? Where sin abounds, grace abounds more, right? Once saved, always saved, right? And I'm like, hold up, you're way out of line. It doesn't mean it like that. Paul's saying the same thing, hold up. It doesn't mean it like that. And yet many people misunderstand this and they go, can go off on tangents. I saw this guy years later, he was in a cult. Uh, yeah, totally down the wrong line. Sad story, but a true story. Why? Because people need to know their identity. They need to know their God-given position. Once you know your God-given position, you'll never release it. You'll never give it up. You'll never sell out if you really know your God-given position. But many folks, even in the church, don't really know their God-given position. And the bummer is, they buy the next thing that comes along. They believe it, and the enemy's laughing. What happens is it renders a church ineffective. It doesn't make us the people of the resurrection. It doesn't make us the people who walk in the power of the spirit, who are more than conquerors. It makes us people trying to cling onto the wheel and try to somehow work it out in our life in a way that we weren't designed to do. This has been a presentation of Valley Metro Church. To hear more messages or to support future podcasts, please visit valleymetrochurch.com.